Liam Lawson has had a really good pair of races so far. I think, like, to jump in that car straight away, and it is probably the worst on the grid, you know, let's let's be real. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, for sure. <laughs> and the move he made, I don't know if you guys saw it, the overtake he made on Hulkenberg, um, or I think it was Hulkenberg, um, into turn one at Monza, he came from absolutely miles back. It was a bit of a, a Daniel Ricciardo dive bomb um, into the first corner. What do we, what do we think about Liam Lawson, Luke? Do we think there's a future for him in F one? Is he going to replace Ricardo, or or is is he not? Does he still need to do more to to replace Ricardo? Well, I don't know. Kind of, as far as just saying he could have a future, yeah, he definitely could. But so could tons of guys. I mean, think about like people we've had come back, like Alex Albon, like Daniel Ricardo, like Nico Hulkenberg, like Kevin Magnussen. Like Fernando Alonso, like we've had tons of guys come back, you know. So as far as having a future goes, it's kind of hard to judge because we could just have, because you know, teams bring in drivers who have already been on the grid. So it's like him being on the grid does give him a better chance, I think, of being on a team in the future. But I think after Ricardo is healed, I I don't think we're gonna see really. I don't really think we're gonna have anybody like, oh yeah, like kick Daniel Ricardo off the team. We want Liam Lawson now. Like, I mean, it's possible because Helmut Marco, like, you know, Helmut Marco, like, talks about switching drivers all the time, you know? So, sure, maybe it's possible, but I, I don't I don't think it's likely. Um, <clears throat> as far as having a future goes, I could see him in the sport for sure, maybe doing something similar like Albon did, you know, where, like, um, he, he goes to a team where, like, I'm going to say he goes to a team. So like he's at AlphaTauri right now. And then maybe in a year we see him go join another team. Like, um, you know, maybe Logan Sargent gets the boot. So he goes like, so maybe him Lawson goes to Williams or maybe like, I don't know, maybe Alpine si- or not Alpine, maybe like Alfa Romeo signs him on, so, but something like that, where he would be signing on to one of these lower class teams. I don't see him being signed on to like a, a Red Bull or an Alpine or a McLaren anytime soon. What do you think, Logan? Do you agree with uh, Luke that uh, there is kind of a future for Liam Lawson, but potentially another team? Or where where do you stand with the whole situation? Yeah, I think there will be a future eventually as the time comes. I'm a big advocate of, you know, letting these guys brew a little bit. You know, we're having these people get into F1 and fail out in their young 20s when we're seeing a lot of the best drivers of all time hit their peak late twenties or even up the mid thirties, you know, so give them time to brew. I even think maybe we threw Logan Sargent in a little bit too quickly, but what he did really show in these last couple races is that he can get into these cars. He can adjust to this different feel of a new car and get to competitive speed rather quickly. So I think just that alone showing that like he could get up the pace was really what he needed to show everyone. And, you know, he accomplished just that. So he did, did show that there is a future, but equally I showed that Ricardo, I think Ricardo showed, I'm sorry, that when he came back and he was on the pace right away, I, he definitely showed that, you know, he is still Daniel Ricardo, regardless of what we saw from him at McLaren. He reminds me like a Vettel where he's a stylistic driver you know, Vettel needed a car with a good rear end, and that's when he's shown. And Ricardo has, likes a car that is stable, so you can kind of drive it an aggressive style with it. He's very good in those kind of cars. And Alpha Tower, while it's not the quickest car he has right now, it does have a chassis set up and is a nice, stable car to drive. That's really going to suit his style, and I think we're going to see more good performances by him come the end of the season, if he does get back, that is. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Do you do you agree, Luke? Do you think uh, Daniel Ricciardo is kind of back and um and will cement himself in that AlphaTauri seat when he gets back? No, I don't. Um, I don't think that he's. Uh, when you say back, right? I think of like he is back and he's going to be performing consistently and well. I don't think that's the case. I. If he's going to be stuck at AlphaTauri right now, I think he's going to be like Vettel where he fizzles out. Okay. So not necessarily that, you know, or oh, meaning like Vettel, like last two or three years of his career, not his entire thing, you know, but I think it's, I think it's going to be a similar, uh, similar situation to that. You know, it's like, he's like, you know, like similar to Vettel, right. Um, Left, to, like they've been through multiple teams that were supposed to be, you know, they've been through multiple teams 
Um, eventually they end up just getting down into some lower class team and then it kind of just fizzles out, right? Like with Vettel specifically, we had him move from Ferrari to Aston Martin for two years and then he retired. Aston Martin, both those years were not spectacular. Uh, something I think it's gonna be something similar to Ricardo, right? He was at Red Bull for a really, for a really good amount of time, performed pretty well. Then he decided to go to Renault, didn't work out. Then he decided to go to McLaren, didn't work out. Now he's at AlphaTauri, and AlphaTauri just doesn't have any sort of... The AlphaTauri is just too slow, or I don't think he'll even be able to get any results out of the car where he would be like noticeable, or people would be like, wow, he's back to his prime. I think he's a good driver, but I don't think he's a miracle driver. Like Him being in this slower car, I don't think we're going to see him somehow... Like, I don't think we're going to see him pull like that extra 10% out of it. You know, I think with someone like Fernando Alonso, we see that, you know, he gets put in like a crap McLaren and, you know, or like, the or like some really bad Ferrari, like the 2014, 2012 Ferrari, you know, he still pulls results out of it. He finds every inch of performance, but I don't think we're going to see that from Daniel Ricciardo. And if he stays at AlphaTauri, it's just going to be like that. You know, we're not going to see really anything spectacular from him. And I don't think he's going to move back up to Red Bull. As like in, instead of Sergio Perez, you know, Sergio Perez contract ends in 2020. Is it 2026 or 2027? 2025, actually. Oh, 2025. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Okay. But even then, I that's another two years. You know, I, I don't really see Daniel Ricardo wanting to be in the sport after two more years in a crap in like probably a crappy or lower field car just to maybe get a shot at Red Bull. If Red Bull doesn't maybe go with Sergio Perez again, you know, they could just extend his contract by a year if he's, if they're still satisfied with how he's doing, you know, there's not many, there's not many other drivers who I think would be stepping up to that Red Bull seat after Sergio Perez retires. You know, I don't think it would be, you know, I don't think that um, Yuki Tsunoda would be really going to Red Bull unless we see a big jump in performance from him. I don't like, I don't really see, like maybe a Liam Lawson, you know, he's doing pretty well in the AlphaTauri. And I think that they'd be more willing to sign a young talent that they can develop in the higher class car, like Liam Lawson, rather than choose someone like Daniel Ricardo, who's going to be coming up on the twilight of his career in the next probably three or four years. I think I, I just don't see him having that yeah. much of a future. Interesting. Have you got a response to that, Logan? Do you do you agree that, or has that changed your mind that you know Ricardo hasn't got much of a future in F one? I think he still does. I mean, when he came back in Hungary, I mean he he would have scored points that race if he wouldn't have got hit lap one. You know, he would have had that standout performance then. So I, I do see shades of him still being a really good driver in a car that suits his driving style, which I think the Alpha Tauri can, with it usually being a stable to drive car. And what I'm seeing is a possibility. If he comes back in this Alpha Tauri and he performs like he did it or was going to at Hungary. You know, he starts outperforming Yuki regularly. And Perez keeps crap in the bed like he was in that middle part of the season. Maybe, just maybe, we could see Verstappen versus Ricardo round two. I don't think so, man. I just don't. I feel like Ricardo just doesn't have the potential to even match. He, or he You know, he doesn't have the potential to match Verstappen. And I don't think he'll be satisfied being the second driver again. You know, I mean, we saw that with McLaren. Lando Norris was very solidly the number one driver in that team. And and people thought they would get along great, but they didn't. They were super bitter rivals. And I don't think that Daniel Ricciardo moving back to Red Bull would be happy being a number two, because I think he would know that he is in the better car and he would be and he would want to be winning races. He would want to be winning, trying to win championships when he's in a championship winning car. But I don't think he could. You know, and I think Red Bull probably knows that, too. So they probably want to choose somebody who's going to be that rear gunner, that good support for Max Verstappen, rather than somebody who's going to want to, you know, like consistently be pushing their like be pushing for stellar performance. You know, I, I just don't think Daniel Ricardo has the talent. You know, he's a good driver for sure, but I don't think he's going to be what. Red Bull is going to want after Sergio Perez, and I don't think he's would. I don't think he'd be satisfied being the number two driver in Red Bull again to the same guy much later 
after this guy has won maybe four world championships, you know, I, I don't think he's going to want that. Time will tell. Anything can happen. Now, what do you think, CJ? Well, what do I think? Well, um, I, yeah, well, we got to toss you back to it. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. Um, personally, I think Ricardo is kind of reaching the end. Um, I actually think Liam Lawson getting a little run in the car at the minute is the worst possible thing for him because if Liam Lawson all of a sudden, let's say we rock up in Singapore in two weeks and he scores points, I don't see how Alpha Tauri aren't going to take him. Um, and I think if Liam Lawson's got two races, I think, we're saying that Ricardo probably will return after Qatar. I think Liam Lawson has got those two races. If he performs kind of how he did in Monza or gets in the points, I think it's game over for Ricardo. I actually think it's that'll be it. Because I actually just think I the only way, the only way if that happens that Ricardo has a chance is because of his mark- marketable kind of side of things. You know, he, he him being at AlphaTauri, or whatever they become next year, especially with this new branding of the team, they need that figurehead. I don't think Yuki Tsunoda is that for them, but Ricardo is, you know, look at the whole Drive to Survive Netflix fans and stuff like that. They go nuts for him. He's super popular. You know, he's one of the kind of more likable drivers on the grid. They want him to perform. You know, they would love if Ricardo came into that car and was scoring points every week. And because he is such a good driver for the team, as in the kind of the image of it and the brand. But I just don't see it. And I think with this broken wrist of his allowing Lawson the opportunity, I can't see how they can say no to him. If, If Lawson kind of has a really good result, um, I you know they're not going to get rid of Yuki Tsunoda. Um, so I don't know. I think it's on a bit of a knife edge, but I would lean towards. I actually can see Liam Lawson. There's a good chance he could end up in that seat for next season, but only time will tell. Yeah, you I know, agree. We we, we yeah. will see. Um, You're right about the idea of. Um, I don't think they would kick Yuki Tsunoda out for Ricardo. I think you're no, right on no, that. Right. You know, if it. Yeah, if it came between the two of them, you know, obviously Daniel Ricciardo hasn't had enough time to settle into the car properly. But if we go back to their past two race results, right? Yuki Sonoda has been on top once. Daniel Ricciardo has been on top once. It sucks that he broke his wrist because I wish we could continue this conversation with more evidence, right? But it's like, I think Ricciardo got like 13th in, um, what would have that been? Ricciardo got like 13th in Hungry. Hungary. Then Yuki Sonoda got like, tent in belgium you know so it was like very I, I know that they've done like a, tracks, a though, switch right? you know yeah that's true that's true but i'm just saying from like what performance we could see out of the car i think they're probably roughly equal but with yuki sonoda having more time at the team i i don't see daniel ricardo getting the boot ultimately you know look if if he comes back from injury yuki Sonoda, yeah. you know and performed then i'll be saying something very different um and that's the thing for him. He has to come. Yeah, back really me too. Strong. Um, but mm-hmm. no, it's an I interesting agree. debate. It's an interesting debate. <laughs>